Hello, this is Chad from Midnight Protective Films. Today we have a unique project. We don't do a lot of older cars, but this one is quite unique. It's a 27 years old 1997 Toyota Line Cruiser. If the paint wasn't immaculate, this job would not be worth it. But this car has 123,000 miles and the paint is in one of the best conditions I've ever seen. So we are gonna go and get the whole car covered in paint protection film. Let me walk you through the process. So this is one of the most odd projects that we've had. I am gonna be walking through everything. I'm gonna be showing you what we did as far as washing it, every individual panel, also how every panel was prepped and also how every panel was covered in paint protection film. From what you can see right here, the first thing we had to do is get the entire vehicle washed thoroughly. And the washing process has to be done very, very precisely and covering all the deep areas. There are certain areas that the power washer cannot uh, reach. So that's why we're using this uh, very fine uh, brush that we can uh, uh, scrub all the small or uh, little crevices and uh, areas that the power washer will not rinse. Because the problem with applying paint protection film is you need to make sure all the areas that you cannot access with a power washer or the power washer cannot scrub, you need these areas to be cleaned. And also you don't want dirt to come out because uh, the application is wet application. And as you squeegee the water out, uh, dirt can fall back in to the paint protection film and can ruin the job. And uh, you don't want to do this, especially when um, you're almost done with the project and you have like the window seals or the door handle area or um, the grill area or anywhere else where you want to finish up the job and uh, some small specks that can ruin the panel completely and you have to redo the whole thing. And now the whole car is washed. We wash it thoroughly. We use a brand new wash mitt for a paint condition like this. We had to do it that way. And we also use a degreaser slash soap to wash the exterior. We also use that soft bristle brush uh, on all the crevices and all the cracks and everything in between and just to get all the dirt out. Uh, what I had to do first right there before I get the hood uh, covered in paint protection film, I had to remove the uh, windshield nozzles uh, to get the maximum uh, protection and uh, here I am uh, getting the uh, panel uh, prepped. We did uh, clay bar the whole car prior to this. We clay bar that right after we washed it and also I clay barred every single panel before I laid the paint protection film just to make sure I get the most pristine surface and uh, from what you can see right there we are spraying it down several times it is a white car so tend uh, well lint tend to be on the surface so we had to be very fast and also we had to prep extra right now we're just spraying the sheet that we're, we're going to be transferring it on the hood uh, and right there we just uh, carefully grab it and uh, just move quickly transfer it without uh, trying to reposition it too much Again, it is a big sheet. Uh, it's five foot by probably seven. We had to have some extra material just to have it on the side, just to give it a little bit of stretch. Uh, there was that uh, antenna on the side. It was kind of like in the way, but what you can see right there, we're making uh, a relief cut just so it's uh, out of the way uh, where the material can be stretched without it bothering us and also affecting the way the material gets stretched. Most of the cuts that I've made, these are cut in the air, um, meaning I did the cut in the air, which I did not touch the panel, but also did some uh, trimming on the panel. I am very well trained when it comes to uh, getting uh, paint protection film trimmed out. Uh, I've done this uh, hundreds of times and I have uh, years under my belt where I can trim a panel, I can lay a piece of, which I've done uh, a test, I can lay a piece of paint protection film on an inflated balloon and I can trim it out without the balloon uh, <laughs> uh, pop. So uh, that's the kind of precision uh, I have. And again, that comes with experience. There are a lot of good installs out there in the country that can uh, provide the same uh, service, meaning they can uh, have that steady hand. So the hood piece was done, I had to pop the hood and uh, uh, keep it open so it's out of my way and now we're doing the fender flare when we do paint protection film in my shop typically we use a template so there are a lot of templates that are available for pretty much all cars but most of the templates are available from cars that were made after 2006 and up 
and uh, mostly after 2013 or even 15. For a car like this that is uh, 25 years old plus, there is zero templates available. So I had to do everything custom by hand, tailored to this specific car. Meaning I have a lot of wasted material to get all the pieces covered and I had to figure things out on how to lay pieces down. But I have the experience where I, it shouldn't be a problem for me. I just have to uh, plan things out beforehand to make sure my piece or the sheet that I cut has extra uh, coverage where I can uh, stretch without having exposed areas. So right now we have the fender flare piece. Again, it's a larger piece than I need because I am going to be wrapping inside the wheel wall area. And from where you can see, there's a lot of relief cuts. Again, I had to figure things out as I do it. Uh, I've done something similar to this before. I mean, there are some cars out there that have fender flares that look similar to it, like the Jeep Wrangler and the G-Wagon. So it's not something very new to me, but for a Toyota Land Cruiser, this is the very first one I've ever done. And I think there isn't many Toyota Land Cruiser FJ80s that have a full body paint protection film in the entire world, uh, at least in the US. I, I don't think there is anybody that has full body paint protection film on their car. Maybe they have the hood, the fenders, or like the fender flares, which is the high in impact areas. But for the entire vehicle, I highly doubt anybody has a full body paint protection film. Uh, unless the car was, you know, fully repainted, um, maybe that's something that it's worth doing. But if anyone has done that, please let me know. I am very curious on who did it and why did you have your car covered in PPF? I am one of these crazy people that wanted to do it and I wanted to do it because it's my personal vehicle. And something about me, I wanted all of my cars to have paint protection film at least, especially the ones that are in this pristine condition. I have several cars that have very good paint jobs and this one is by far one of the best ones. I have probably like two other ones that have similar paint condition, but again, these other cars have about 10th of the mileage this one has. Um, maybe maybe a, a quarter of the miles this one has. So this one having that many miles, it's quite unique. From what you can see right there, I had to do a lot of relief cuts from, uh, you can see from the outside and also from the inside. Right now what I'm doing, I'm just tucking the uh, corners, trying to get the maximum coverage possible. Right there I am trimming against the rubber seal just to get the tightest, cleanest look. And uh, I'm using my very sharp carbon razor blade. Uh, right there we are doing the rear fender flare. The front one is already done. Right now we're doing the rear fender flare on the door. I had to do this one while it's mounted on the vehicle just to get the maximum uh, protection. And then after that, we ended up removing it. And you will see what I'm talking about in the upcoming clips. Right there, the rear front fender flare. Uh, there is a specific way to get it done. It is the, the smallest fender flare, I believe, on the vehicle. But again, it, it needs it needs some stretch. There are certain areas right there. I'm explaining to one of my uh, staff, showing them how to uh, stretch the piece in, in a certain direction and also how to apply in a certain way. Again, we use a lot of uh, templates, and these templates are made specifically for each individual panel on each individual car and each individual model. But this vehicle, like I said, there is nothing available. So we have to make everything custom tailored specifically to each individual panel. What you can see right there, the one on this uh, fender flare is not going to be the same on the other fender flare, which is uh, the mirror side of it. So each one has to be done exactly the same way, but uh, the coverage is slightly different. Uh, some of them have the rubber trim, which is the one that holds the edge. And some of them I had to remove the fender flare and get the door done you will see that in the next video there were some challenges that we had to face certain areas were kind of hard to reach and you can see this one i am struggling a little bit on how to push this area down but i was able to where you can see right there uh, make my cuts and also push it all the way down for me you see like it's slice in several areas right there that what it's called relief cuts and for me that allow me to push the material for you know inside the wheel wall area to get the maximum coverage without it applying too much tension right there i am trimming the uh, outside portion which is the one that is visible very very carefully and right there i am peeling the excess of film and then after that will just have to be tucked in 
Again, everything had to be done very precisely, very carefully, and I had to be super, super patient. I typically take my time and get the job done right, and this one by far one of my proudest jobs ever. So uh, uh, whoever uh, gets his hand or gets to see the car in person will uh, absolutely love the job that was performed on this vehicle. And the reason why I'm saying this is because, again, everything was done custom on this one. Uh, we do a lot of custom work, but not as much as templates, like I said. And uh, this one was just uh, so cool to work on, especially being it's my personal vehicle. I tried to cover as many edges as possible and wrap them around, but certain edges you really cannot. There is a limitation to the material. If you are a good installer, you will know what the limit is uh, for each corner and each edge. Uh, you, and you have to uh, work around it. You don't want to overstretch the material. You don't want to wrap more than you need. And what we call we call over wrapping. Right there, I am trying to remove the fender flare so I can get the door covered. Uh, it's held by two bolts, uh, 10 millimeter bolts on the top and the bottom. And there are these uh, two clips. I did not break the clips. I was able to wiggle the fender flare and pretty much like slide it where the clip go and then I take the clip and then slide it back in the front of the flare. Like you can see right there, there's a lot of dirt that's left behind. I had to clean it all up and kind of like polish it by hand. And then I uh, got the door cleaned up, got it all clay barred. And uh, here's the sheet that I have for it. Uh, again, it's custom. I am now right there, it's getting transferred. And right there, it's getting uh, squeezed down. The first thing I have to do is uh, get the top locked in so dirt doesn't fall in. And that's the reason why we're washing it with the brushes so dirt from the seals don't fall in the paint protection film. And our biggest nightmare is lint. Uh, there's like thousands of them and you just want to avoid it as much as possible. And the way to avoid it is to prep correctly and also to move fast. You don't want to reposition the material too much. If you are an experienced installer, you should be able to move much quicker than a newbie or like a a novice experience uh, installer so you'll be able to move faster and also you don't have to reposition the material too much lay it down lock at the top lock the bottom and uh, trim out one thing about doing paint protection film fully custom without any templates is laying the pieces down is the easy part but doing the trimming is the hardest part and it's also the most consuming part right there you can see me i laid the piece down i also had to trim and then peel and then had to squeegee it down or also even like tuck it i got like almost every single edge covered and it just looks phenomenal right there we're doing some hardware removal where i'm removing the uh, rear window wiper and uh, i decided to do a little bit more hardware removal just because i felt like getting the best coverage uh, right there you can see this is the lock key for the rear tailgate I was able to remove it. Uh, it was my first time taking it off, so it wasn't that bad. It was actually much easier than anyone would think. Again, with the proper tool and a little bit of common sense, anyone can figure this out. Right there, I am doing some taping. I was taping this badge so I can use it to place the badge when I put it back on after the paint protection film is done. I did not know the badge had pins, so the pins were able to help me locate where the badge goes back on. I've never removed the badge before, so I had to use this template just to uh, guide me where the badge goes after the badge is removed. Uh, but again, after doing this, uh, here's a template right there. You can see me. I'm saving that. I'm also saving the second template for the uh, four uh, four wheel drive, all time four wheel drive. And uh, <laughs> uh, right there, I had to remove it with uh, fishing wire, get that off. Right there says some residue that's left behind and here's the Toyota badge I was removing as well. And you'll see me struggle in a certain area where the string or the fishing line just did not move. And here I am noticing that there are pins which was great because that helps me guide where the badge will go. And here I am removing the rear window wiper. I was able to just unbolt it and then throw it inside so I held it in place. And afterwards, I had to just clay bar the entire tailgate uh, before the PPF application. Here I'm doing the lower tailgate section first. Um, it was kind of like tricky to figure it out, especially having the license plate area and also having the plastic uh, right there, the plastic trim 
where the license plate light is. So I had to make this uh, funky trimming area. I had to do some trim, uh, trim that piece away. You can see right there, I didn't trim to the right, I trimmed to the left. Uh, so when it lays down, it gives me better coverage. Um, after that, I just was struggling just getting this area to lock in place and I was able to lay it all down and now it looks like it's not even there. After that piece is complete, now I'm doing the upper tailgate portion. And uh, right there, I'm just using like a 10 or 12 millimeter uh, nut just to use a circle. And that circle was a measurement that I took for the rear window uh, nozzle. There's a rear window nozzle right there from you can see on the top. I had to make the cutout for it because uh, I want to work around it instead of making a seam to the top. So I had to make that cutout uh, after taking some measurements with leaving some access right there. You can see I'm fitting it uh, around the area. First thing I locked it in place and then I'm doing this uh, uh, trimming for the excess material around the rear window. And then I'm just uh, squeezing everything down and making sure everything is laid where it should be. I did tape that window area just because I wanted to avoid any dirt falling in the paint protection film from the tailgate. Now right there I am doing my final trimming just to uh, get everything covered as much as possible. And uh, here is, I believe we're doing the door. No, this is the fender. We are going to be doing the front fender right there. I was honestly shocked how long the fender is from side to side, uh, especially counting from where it goes towards the grill or like below the side marker area and uh, how far it can go in the bottom behind the front tire. So I measured enough, but at the same time I was kind of running slightly short, but I was able to make it work by making that relief cut right there and then stretching down and you will see that. And uh, again, it was very, very interesting to lay this one down, especially without removing the fender flare, which I should have removed the fender flare on this specific one, but I did not do it. I only did it on the other side, which, you know, worked out. And sometimes you just have to try it certain ways. And one, one panel, you remove, a, you remove a fender flare, one panel, you don't, and you just want to make it work. Uh, at some point, you'll see which one is easier and which one gives you the best results just something about this car man it's absolutely amazing the way it looks and this paint condition on this specific car like i said i've worked on a lot of cars this one is absolutely beautiful and if it ever gets sold i am gonna be super super jealous for the person that will buy it just because uh, that person is gonna get the perfect the perfect land cruiser it's a 1997 which is the last year they made this vehicle. This is the base, uh, which is not the 40th anniversary and also not the collector edition. This is the base. Uh, and also it, uh, it's a triple locked, which is uh, to some people what they call it. They call it, it's got that magical switch. Triple locker typically they bring up about 15 to 20,000 to even more in value just because they're super rare. Most people don't even use that feature. The, the three differential lockers but it's just so cool to have because they didn't make too many of them and uh, it's one of these options that people just go crazy about the person that I purchased this vehicle from is a friend of mine that is from pennsylvania and he is a farm person he owns a farm and he had this vehicle stored in his miami beach condo he only goes once a year drives it puts about a thousand miles on it, and that's what he did for the past 10 years he is the original owner he purchased this vehicle back in 1998 and he's had it since that moment he only drove it for about a thousand miles for the past 10 years and he put the majority of the miles back when he had a back home in pennsylvania but surprisingly again for a pennsylvania car this car barely barely has any rust i mean all the rust that it has is just a surface rust which that's very common even in a california car which is known to be a rust free i've owned several california cars and this one has just as much rust as these California cars, which blows my mind. Even when driving it, I almost did not want to drive it when it's raining, just because I want to just preserve it in the condition it is right now. The underneath, which is undercarriage, is absolutely beautiful. It looks amazing. Um, the paint is pristine. There are just a few small blemishes in certain area on the tailgate and also small rock chips on the hood. 
the uh, interior is beautiful everything on the inside works the heat the ac every single button works uh, just one button that does not work which is the antenna and these antennas are manual so you press a button and the antenna will raise up on this one if you want to listen to a radio i mean you can listen to the radio without raising the antenna but that was just some cool feature where back then the antenna goes up back in the day now the antenna is in the back window on most of cars right there i'm doing one of the final pieces and that's the rear fender flare where you can see this is what i'm talking about the you know the, the small little uh, cuts that i made these are the relief cuts that i was talking about and these allow me to cover more as in like cover deeper and uh that way i can get that perfect result oh right there i am doing the quarter panel uh, this is a big piece but again this was split in several pieces between the roof and the quarter panel on both sides right there we're getting it transferred i should have removed the fender flare but i didn't uh but the good thing is that did not affect the results i was able to use a bunch of uh relief cuts and that allowed me to cover this one completely you can you can almost not tell there is any paint protection film on this one right there you can see i made that cut right there cover the top and i also made another cut that will meet the uh the roof because the roof and the quarter panels are one piece including the the pillar and right there i made some uh, relief cuts around the tail lights also some relief cuts around the tailgate to get the perfect coverage and um, here i am i'm doing just my final touches uh, just to get this beautiful toyota land cruiser fully covered in paint protection film and here we have it just take a look at the results you almost you almost cannot tell that there is anything on here if i'm gonna keep this car or if i'm gonna sell it at any moment if i'm gonna keep it i know it's gonna be preserved the way it is and i'm gonna take care of it probably not even uh, drive in the snow or in the rain just because it's such a beautiful truck in a beautiful condition and i want to preserve it the way it is brand new tires brand new paint protection film the paint looks beautiful and the whole car is ready to be preserved